this video, we will be taking a transmission fluid sample for the purpose of sending it in to get analyzed to see the health of our transmission fluid. Through the driver's side door, we can locate our hood release latch. Pulling on that hood release latch will pop the hood. And after releasing our secondary safety latch, we can raise the hood. Taking a look at the engine bay, we want to focus our attention on the driver's side front portion of the engine. Specifically, we are looking for a red handled dipstick. If we take a look at that red circle, we can see that it says AT oil or automatic transmission oil. Now before we continue, I do want to note that the transmission is actually called an automatic transaxle. So if you hear that term, essentially it is referring to the transmission. To begin, I'm going to withdraw the transmission fluid dipstick and clean it off. I then want to measure out a length of tubing equal to the distance from the tip of the dipstick to the location at which it is seated in the engine. And I will mark the tubing at this location. I'm then going to add probably about 6 to 12 inches and cut my tubing. And I can then install that tubing in the back side of my pump. Having that tubing protrude through just a little bit and then tighten that down on the tubing. Taking a look inside my kit, I have a variety of items. The one that I am looking for is the sample jar. After removing the lid from my sample jar, I can install it onto my pump. And prior to taking the sample, we want to start the engine and allow the engine to pump the transmission fluid through so we can get a good mix of what is actually flowing through the engine. And then we can install our tube into our transmission dipstick location all the way down to that black mark that we made on the tube, identifying the top of the dipstick, pull on the pump a couple times, and fill our sample jar. When we get towards the top, we will withdraw the tube. And reinstall our dipstick. We can then remove our sample jar. and cap that. We can then remove and properly dispose of our tubing and take a look at the other items included in our kit. We have our plastic mailer. We have our instructions. We have our data sheet as well as the shipping label. Now before sending my sample jar in, I am going to tape the top just to help prevent it from opening or if it gets uh, crushed with other packages um, to prevent any type of fluid from spilling. This is just an added measure to make sure that my sample arrives in good condition. Taking a look at our paperwork, I went ahead and completed all of it, and we'll take a look at each section. First, we want to identify how we want our report to be received. I prefer mine to be received via email. Next, we have all of our account information. This is our business or personal information. Below that, we have our sample information. The component ID is whatever you want to reference this vehicle. I chose 
the name Stacy's car. The secondary ID, it is recommended that you use the year or engine size of the vehicle. So I went ahead and used 2008 Hyundai Elantra four cylinder. After that, we have the component or fluid type. This was a transmission that is automatic. So I checked that box. Moving down, we have the date that the sample was taken followed by the fluid time. Now the fluid time is the length that this particular fluid has been running in the engine. If you have seen my previous video from about 10 years ago, I changed the transmission fluid in this vehicle. That same fluid has been running for the last 10 years. When I calculate out the mileage, I get 77,457 miles on this transmission fluid. The component time is the total number of miles, in this case, on your transmission or on your vehicle. For this, I did not change my fluid and I did not change the filter because I am just wanting to check the health of the fluid and the transmission. Lastly, because I am sending this in as a new sample, I want to identify that this is a 2008 Hyundai Elantra. I am also going to specify the transmission fluid manufacturer and type that is in the vehicle. So I have AMSOIL Signature Series Multi-Vehicle Automatic Transmission Fluid and the classification is ATF1G is the essentially the product SKU or the product identifier. If we go over to the other side of our documents we have a couple stickers. We want to apply the top sticker to our sample jar after we have written the date and our component ID this will help the lab identify the sample and make sure nothing gets mixed up. There is an additional sticker for my records. We can then place our sample jar into the plastic bag and seal the top of it tightly. We can add our paperwork to the front sleeve of that plastic mailer. Now you can add the label to this mailer. However, I have had these packages lost on multiple occasions by multiple different carriers. Now what I do highly recommend is instead of mailing it in the mailer, put it in a cardboard box. I have never had one of these shipped in a cardboard box get lost whereas I have had multiple of these in the mailers get lost through multiple different carriers. You've got mail. If we take a look at our transmission oil analysis results, in the top left corner we have all of our account information Moving over to the right, we have our component information. This is the information that we provided with our sample. Moving over to the right again, we have our sample information. Moving down one row, we have our product information, which is the fluid that is installed in the vehicle. Moving to the left, we have some miscellaneous information. Moving to the left again, we have our filter information. And then we have our comments section, which I'll go over towards the end. Moving down to the first chunk of information, we have our wear metals. Taking a look at the wear metals, we can see that all of the values are 
within an acceptable range. Our aluminum is a little bit abnormal based on our overall severity report. But overall, our wear metals are looking okay. If I move over to my contaminant metals, these are all looking pretty decent as well. Taking a look at my multi-source metals, I'm not seeing any issues here either. And lastly, in that row, our additive metals we're also looking pretty good. Moving down, if I take a look at my fluid properties, again, my values are looking pretty good. Moving to the left for contaminants, there's no indication of unusual contaminants. And then lastly, taking a look at my sample information, we can see that my first sample was taken in 2018, which was five years and about 60,000 miles of running this fluid. My next sample was taken in 2023 and had about 80,000 miles on that fluid. And all of these values are compared against my baseline sample where I took a sample directly out of a new bottle and sent it into the lab so I know what brand new fluid should look like. That is my baseline sample. Going back up to my comments, it was commented that there is no immediate need for maintenance and then there was some additional information on where some of these contaminants may have come from. If I zoom out and take a look at the report as a whole, my overall severity report is in the normal range. And based off of all of this information, I would feel comfortable running this fluid for another five years and testing it again at that point in time.